Welcome back to Falcon Physician Review's online review for USMLE Step 1. This is Microbiology Module 10, Spore-Forming and Non-Spore-Forming Gram-Positive Rods. We'll talk about Bacillus and Clostridium species, and also the non-spore-formers. Welcome to Falcon Physician Review's online review course for USMLE Step 1. This is Microbiology Module 10. We're going to be talking about spore-forming and non-spore-forming Gram-Positive Rods. The, the gram-positive rods include important medical species like the bacillus species, clostridium species, and both of those are spore-forming rods. There are a group of non-spore-forming gram-positive rods, but there's only four organisms you need to know. Carinibacteria, Listeria, Nocardia, and Actinomyces. For the bacillus species, there are two individual species you'll need to know, Bacillus anthracis and Bacillus cereus. Both are important causes of important human disease. This figure talks about the different gram-positive rods and is a nice thing for reviewing because it highlights the differences between the different species. Things to know are the, the difference between the spore formers and the non-spore formers. Again, Bacillus and Clostridium form spores. The rest of the gram-positives do not. Anaerobic growth is unique among the, the Clostridium species, Carinibacteria, and Listeria. So Bacillus is the only one that can grow aerobically. Motility is an important distinguishing factor. Bacillus cereus is modal, whereas Bacillus anthracis is not. All the Clostridium species are modal except for C. perfringens. And Listeria, its characteristic feature is its tumbling motility. Also, you should know that Listeria doesn't have any exotoxins, does exhibit intracellular growth, and does affect immunocompromised hosts. And that's some of the differences it has between the other gram-positives. Bacillus anthracis is our first species up. It's a gram-positive aerobic spore forming large rod and you've got a picture there to look at those bullet shaped things. Transmission for Bacillus anthracis is through skin contact with infected animals or you can inhale the spores which are also found in infected animals that's called wool sorters disease. Also you could ingest contaminated meat. The pathogenesis for Bacillus anthracis revolves around its ability to form spores. The spores survive long after the animal dies. They can be inactivated by ethylene oxide gas or by gamma irradiation. Also, once it insporulates, or actually once the bacteria comes back out of the spore form, it has a, a capsule which is antiphagocytic. It's made out of poly-D glutamate, and so it's the only bacterial capsule which is not a polysaccharide. Bacillus anthracis has three toxins that you'll need to know. It's a three-component heat labile exotoxin, which has an edema factor, which binds calmodulin and acts as a denylate cyclase, increasing cyclic AMP. It has a lethal factor, which will kill the cells, and it has a protective antigen. This mediates the entry of the edema factor and the lethal factor into the cell. It's also immunogenic, and that's the antigen they use for the vaccine, the protective antigen. Clinical findings in anthrax include a cutaneous form, a pulmonary form, and a gastrointestinal form. The cutaneous anthrax is usually not very serious. You'll get an ulcer, you'll get a black scar or a malignant pustule, and there's a picture of it for your reference. Pulmonary anthrax, on the other hand, is rapidly fatal. It forms a fulminant pneumonia, fever, malaise, non-productive cough, hemorrhagic mediastinal, mediastinal lymphadenitis. And you look on this chest x-ray, and right above the heart silhouette, you've got the mediastinum, and it's widened. Gastrointestinal anthrax is rare, but it can also be fatal. Like most gastrointestinal diseases, it's featured with vomiting, diarrhea, and on pathology you have ulcerated mucosa with eventual bacteremia. Lab diagnosis of anthrax includes analysis of a smear or culture. It's going to be catalase positive. It's non-hemolytic. It's non-modal, unlike B. serious. You form polychromatic, polychromatic methylene blue stain for unique peptide capsule. So you, you can get the capsule identified with the polychrome methylene blue stain. More quickly than culturing it is serology, where you can do fluorescent antibodies. If ciprofloxacin isn't available, doxycycline, clindamycin, erythromycin, or vancomycin are acceptable alternatives. And since prevention is better than cure, you can present, we can prevent anthrax from happening with a vaccine. It consists of a protective antigen purified from killed bacteria. You're going to give this to people who work around contaminated meat or work with animals that could be contaminated, so wool sorters. Bacillus cereus is the other gram-positive spore former we need to talk about. It causes food poisoning and also is an important cause of endophthalmitis in the eye. 
The pathogenic features of B. cereus include an emetic or enteric toxin and a diarrheal toxin. The emetic toxin is fast acting within the first six hours. It acts a lot like Staph aureus toxin, and it causes vomiting and diarrhea. The diarrheal toxin is a more slow acting, lasting about 18 hours. It's similar to the LT toxin for E. coli, and it also increases cyclic AMP, producing rice water stools. Bacillus cereus also has a serial lysin, which disrupts membrane cholesterols, and a carotic toxin, which has vascular permeability to allow more spread of the bacteria through the body. Therapy for B. cereus includes support for enteric intoxications, and if you have endophthalmitis, if you have somebody with an infection inside the eye, you'll want to give intravitreal or inside the eye vanc vancomycin. Let's do a question. A 58-year-old importer of animal hides develops fever, malaise, and cough for two days. His chest x-ray demonstrates mediastinal widening. You immediately begin IV antibiotics, but within hours he succumbs to his illness. The high mortality of this illness is attributed to... So as we look at this question, we have a couple features in the stem which tell us what's going on. We have, a, we have an animal hide worker, so we have somebody who's exposed to spores from animal hides, that immediately makes us think of cutaneous or pulmonary anthrax. The mediastinal widening on the chest ray is the other key, which tells us that we're dealing with anthrax. Even though we treated him, he died, and so the question is why. We talked about all the different factors that Bacillus anthracis uses to exhibit its pathogenicity, and although it does have a protective capsule, that's not what's immediately lethal for these people. The spore formation is also important in, able, in being able to establish disease, but the thing that kills people is the exotoxin production. Remember, you have the edema factor and the lethal factor. Let's do another question. A power outage occurs on Friday night, causing the school cafeteria's refrigerator to turn, to turn off over the weekend. Power is restored late Sunday night, and the refrigerator is cold the following morning, when the unsuspecting cooks return to serve the normal lunch crowd the daily special, chili. Overnight, the students developed abdominal pain, Nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. The health department obtains samples of the chili and finds gram-positive rods with spores. Alarmed, they need to determine if it, the bacillus is anthra anthrax or serious. They can use all of the following to distinguish the two except. So this is a question that asks us to distinguish between bacillus anthracis and bacillus serious. We know that there's a difference between them in motility. We know that the bacillus anthracis has a capsule. We know that Bacillus anthracis is much more serious and lethal, but we know that both of them produce a toxin, and so you cannot distinguish Bacillus anthracis from Bacillus serious by their toxin production. You could tell that there are different toxins produced, but they both produce a toxin which makes them similar. Let's wrap up Microbiology Module 10. We talked about the spore-forming gram-positive rods, specifically the Bacillus species. We talked about Bacillus anthracis and Bacillus cereus. Anthracis is commonly known as a cause of anthrax, and Bacillus cereus is a common cause of food poisoning. Being familiar with the treatment, such as ciprofloxacin, and the diagnosis, and the clinical scenarios in which you'll see cutaneous or pulmonary anthrax is important. Up next, we'll go to Module 11. We'll talk about the other spore-forming gram-positive rod, the Clostridium species.